Welcome back. This lesson today is going to be more specifically about x-rays. Now, you'll notice on the handout there are four different images for you to look at. I, again, don't expect you to know the answers for everything right away. Just take a, just try your best on them. Try the first one, try the second one, try the third one, try the fourth one. Do it in pencil as we go through here. If you need to change your answers, that's fine. We'll take it up at one point anyway. Um, just have a little bit of fun with it, okay? So don't worry if you know you don't know the answers to everything right now. You will by the end. Okay, so we're going to talk more about x-rays. So x-rays, um, what they are properly called, like we call them x-rays because you're going to go get x-rays, but what they really are are radiographs, right? So they're taking pictures using um, radioactivity. So they're accurately named radio. So x-rays were developed by Wilhelm Rowentigen in 1895. Now one of the um, former units of measurement of x-ray or gamma rays were, were in Rowentigen's, but they've changed their um, units now. But anyway, so you may see that. You may notice this fellow's name on the periodic table as well. So x-rays are a form of electromagnetic energy. They're smaller, like smaller wavelengths compared to something like regular light rays, which we would see are visible light. Okay, so they're up here where they're, they're a lot smaller little rays. All right, so they can penetrate in through um, material. All right, so what are we going to use x-rays for. There's a number of reasons why you're going to use x-rays and your doctor will decide what is the best form of imaging for whatever injury or illness or condition that you're looking for. Now, what they do is they're going to use the cheapest form of imaging first. Imaging costs the healthcare system millions and millions of dollars. It is like the single most expensive thing that is in healthcare is just doing imaging. So if you go in and you've got an injury or an illness or whatever it is, the doctor is going to decide what is the best way to get an image of whatever is wrong inside you. All right, and they're going to start with the lower cost ones first. Now we didn't do very much about cost benefit analysis, probably going to end up having to skip it. Um, but basically we want to save the healthcare system money by doing the best possible imaging we can do. All right, so x-rays are pretty cheap and you can see a lot of stuff in x-rays and if there's something that comes up unusual on x-ray that you can't see it very well, well then you'll go to the next step which is a CAT scan which costs a lot more money and shows a little bit more detail. But you'll notice that you know a lot of people complain that they don't have an MRI or a CAT scan but it's because sometimes you just don't need them. You can see what you need to see with an ultrasound or a x-ray. Okay, so we're going to use x-rays for things like broken bones. All right, if you've ever broken a bone, you know you always end up going for x-rays. If you've gone to the dentist, they're going to do your, um, your tooth x-rays to see if you've got decay or whether where your new teeth are coming in um, and if you've had if you've swallowed something so a lot of children if they swallow something they'll get sent for x-rays we can look at soft tissue as well so we can look at things like our lungs we can look at some of the blood vessels and we can look at our intestines and you also will get sent for um, an x-ray if you've got problems with bones or other kind of joint problems all right and then sometimes from that they can see what's wrong with you and and, and um, diagnose you from that point. Okay, so this, all right, so we're going to talk a little bit about how x-rays work. Now, keeping in mind that we are not physicists, we're going to do this as simply as possible. So we talked about it a little bit yesterday. Um, the x-ray machine, so the machine that's going to emit the x-rays, its job, without getting into the physics behind it, is to produce high energy photons. So the, these are little packages of energy x-ray energy that are going to be shot out of the x-ray machine. All right? Then what happens next is some types of tissue are going to allow those photons to pass through, so those little high energy packets to pass through, and other types of material are going to absorb those energy photons. All right? So um, any of the x-rays or the high energy photons that get through are going to be detected on that detector sheet that we said behind, all right? 
Um, so the imaging plate detects the x-rays that pass through. And then what ends up happening is we have two options here, depending on whatever machine the person buys. You, we can have a laser scanner that reads the um, energy that hits that detector and digitizes the image, or you can have a digital camera that captures the image, all right? And then everything goes on to a computer. So when you see in shows now where they're holding up those x-rays to the light and they're looking at it and deciding on, you know, what's wrong with a person, nobody uses those types of film anymore they it, everything's done on computer all right and it's really neat the programs they have for all this kind of stuff they can really get in great 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 detail all right so they they do that for dramatic effect on tv shows because it just looks better holding an x-ray up to the light and looking at things um, rather than just having people looking at a computer all right so you probably anybody who's had a broken bone you've probably been in an x-ray machine now this is just you can look on this YouTube video if you want to you don't have to um, especially if you've had one now the person will be uh, either laying or standing whatever it is depends on the injury sitting sometimes um, laying there this will be where the detector plate is underneath and this will be the um, the x-ray machine that's going to produce the x-rays okay and then the person just lay there the technician goes away um, sometimes this person this looks like this person's well it's fake picture but this person would be getting an abdominal scan but if they were doing something uh, upper or arm or leg or something they put those lead sheets on you sometimes just to protect the rest of your body um, and you know if you've ever been to the dentist they put that heavy lead <laughs> blanket on you and then they leave the room and zap the x-ray because they don't want to be a you know overdosed with all the x-rays over and over again all right so what are the benefits so get used to all this every one of these um diagnostic imaging process that we're going to do this is one benefit they all have all right they are all non-invasive so if you want to do like capital n capital i or something like that to say it's non-invasive go for that all right because they're all going to be non-invasive that's that's you know rather than having to open you up to see what's wrong inside they can take a picture from outside all right, um, th this is really fast, it's easy, and it's fairly inexpensive. Like it's like 25 bucks to get um, an arm x-ray. So it's fast, it's easy, and it's inexpensive for the healthcare system, right? So it's $25 and goes up in price. And that includes the um, cost of the technician and the um, radiologist to do the reading of it. All right, and for the patient, it's fast, easy, and painless. Now, of course, if you've got a broken arm and they're moving your arm all over the place, which I, I remember that happened to me when I was young, um, that was pretty painful, but compared to having surgery, this is pretty pain, painless. All right, but of course, there's always gotta be some drawbacks or some disadvantages. So one of the ones, um, one of the drawbacks is radiation sickness, but that's not really a problem today. Um, the, they have low dose, um, x-ray machines so you're not getting like the big high energy x-rays that are flowing through you and they don't um, you know you don't go for endless endless x-rays over and over and over again if you go to get a chest x-ray that's about equal to a four-hour flight of radiation if you get your dental x-rays done that's about a day's worth of radiation so if you're really worried about radiation just stay in for the rest of the day don't get any uh, radiation now some some processes are a lot more or have a lot more um, radiation so for example if you go get a ct of the abdomen and pelvis that's about three years worth of just regular background radiation um, if you go get a i'm just looking at a sheet here a chest um, yeah a ct of your chest that's about two years worth of radiation um, if you go get a, a mammogram is about seven weeks of radiation so it just depends on how like where they're doing the, the x-ray of how much radiation you get okay so radiation sickness is not really a problem it was a problem when they first were doing x-rays and one of the greatest party tricks was um, you know bringing an x-ray machine over to your friend's house and then x-raying yourself over and over again and there's there's um, uh, stories of x-ray technicians or the doctors when this first came out like x-raying their hands over and over and over again and then eventually their hands kind of were were um, cooked with radiation poisoning okay now the other thing is that there is a limit with the images and we'll be looking at some of the images there and you can see that sometimes there's blurry spots and things that you just you know really can't correct for um, and then again you have to be careful of your reproductive areas because you don't want to cause any mutations in any of the um, sperm or the egg cells okay so a couple things you have to remember when we're looking at x-rays so keep 
remember when you were looking at x-rays, you're getting them in 2D. You're getting the width and the height that's maintained, but you're not able to see the depth from that picture, which is why we end up doing a lot of times two different views so you can get the depth as well. Okay, so you get a 2D image with the height and the width, but you're not quite getting the depth. The depth is lost. All right. Remember when you're looking at the pictures, even though it should be, it should show you on the pictures, which is the left and which is the right side. But remember when you're looking at the x-rays, the left side of the image is the patient's right side. All right. So you're looking at them as if they were facing you. All right. And the other thing to remember is if the material is dense, it's going to come up white on the x-ray. All right. So the more dense, the whiter the thing is going to be. All righty. So let's take a, a little couple, like look at some x-rays here. So you he, see, you'll hear, see here, here's the left side of the patient. So it's as if this patient is standing towards you. This is a chest x-ray. And take a peek here. We've got some nice black air in there, right? That's what you want to see, nice black lungs. We've got the air comes out black. Remember, air or gas comes out as being black. We've got bone that comes up as an off-white kind of a color. All right, and then we've got our dense tissue like our liver that comes up as being a little bit darker gray colored in there. All right, so you, oh, there, I've got the little circle coming up to show, you know, the left side there. Now, one guess, I'll give you, I'm not, I don't even have music to play for, or nature sounds, but I'm just going to ask you this question really quick. All right, what is the number one object after food that gets aspirated by children? So aspirated means they suck it into their, um, their either into their trachea or into their bronchi, bronchial, bronchi or into their bronchial. So it goes into their lungs. So what's the number one object? I'll give you a second to think about it. All right, did anybody think of coins? So here's an x-ray again. Here's how you can see that that depth is lost. So here's a child who's swallowed a coin, all right? Looks like it's just stuck there in the very, very front. But when you do this side x-ray here, you see that it's actually gone down their trachea into their chest, okay? So again, this demonstrates the importance of making sure you have a couple of images so that you can get some of that depth and make sure your kids aren't walking around with money in their mouths. All right, so some of the things that's really important, so make sure you, you write these things down, all right? So what is important to have on an x-ray? Always, 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 always. Make sure you've checked for the name, okay? The name has to be in there. So you're gonna double check, you're gonna look at the x-ray and then you're gonna make sure you ask the patient what their name is so that you make sure you've got the right patient's x-rays, right? Problems happen because you don't have the right person's x-rays. Now, the next thing you wanna look at too, and a lot of times what they'll do too, is they'll double check the patient's name with their date of birth, all right? So if it's on the x-ray, because sometimes people can have the same name, but seldom do they have the same date of birth. All right, the next thing you wanna look at is you wanna look at the date of the x-ray, okay? So you're gonna look at the date because you wanna make sure you're looking at, or maybe you wanna look at an old x-ray and compare it to a new x-ray, but you, you know, you're looking at a patient sitting in front of you, you wanna make sure you're looking at the most current x-ray unless you're wanting to look at something that's old, right? There was um, a friend of my son who had a broken thumb, broke his thumb in hockey, uh, was out of games for, I don't know, six weeks or whatever, went back, and it turns out they had looked at an old x-ray when he broke his thumb before, and they thought that was what the x-ray was. They thought he had broken his thumb, but he hadn't actually broken his thumb. It's because they looked at his old x-ray when his thumb was broken before, so he missed a number of weeks of hockey because they looked at the wrong x-ray. They didn't check the date. Okay, the next thing you're going to look for as well is what kind of view you have. Now, not all x-rays are going to have all this kind of information on them as well, but they better have the name and they better have the date. So this is telling you we're going to be looking at from the anterior to the posterior position here, okay? So it's giving you the view, your anterior to posterior, so you're looking at the patient straight on. Right? A lot of times they'll be telling you what you're looking at. Now, the radiologists are pretty darn smart. Okay, right? They, they kind of know what they're looking at and they'll look for other things too. But this is just showing you, you know, the, on the prescription or the requisition probably said, you know, this person's got a clavicle that's out of whack. Um, we need for you to have a look at it. And then so the radiologist will know to look at the clavicle for sure. And then they'll probably also take a look at all the other pieces that are around just to see if there's anything else that's out of order, all right? And then the type of image, which the obviously this is an x-ray, but sometimes they'll have that information on there as well, okay, what type of image that they're looking at, all right? But the number one, the most important thing, or the most two most important things, make sure you have the right name and make sure you're looking at the correct x-ray. 
Alrighty. So the next thing here is we want to make sure we have the orientation correct as well. So you're going to look on this slide and make sure you've either got left side or right side so that you're making sure you're looking at the patient properly. All right, we don't want a mistake of them taking out the left kidney when it's the right kidney or whatever it is. So make sure you're looking at the orientation. The orientation should be on there to show you what the patient's left side and right side are. All righty. Um, all right, so next thing here, I'm going to show you some pictures at the very end of some COVID uh, pictures. But here, remember we talked about what fluid does in an x-ray? Or yeah, in an x-ray, we said it increases the density. So this is what, what pneumonia looks like. So it's, you've got a whole pile of fluid in the lungs here and it's going to make it become more opaque so before this side looks pretty good still it's pretty um, the air is still looking pretty black here but on this side we've got this opacity here opac opacity however you want to say it it's in here has become more opaque um, showing you that there's a fluid build up there so that's what pneumonia would look like under an x-ray all right next thing well, duh, there's fluid that's white so this is your pneumonia now the next thing on here here okay now this is going to be a kidney stone it's close to the spine here all right you can't see the kidney very well this is what we're saying about the limits of the images because you're not seeing a nice outline of the kidney but this would be a kidney stone so things like mineral deposits right remember your things off the periodic table calcium big mineral deposit there is going to come up to be very very um uh white colored okay the next thing on here you'll see this here this is one lucky fella all right, so this here is a metal bullet, all right, that got lodged right in between uh, the two vertebrae here. So this person was not, didn't go through their spinal cord, the person wasn't paralyzed, but metals are going to come up as being white, like a nice distinct white compared to bone. You can see this bone here is kind of grayish, this bones here kind of grayish, and this, uh, the metal is white. And a lot of times with metals too, they have a kind of a, a non-natural form. All right, so they kind of like this has a very distinct form to it. Not all the time, but you know, the metals have kind of this really distinct form on them. All right, now we talked about um, our elements on the periodic table. So if we're doing, a, this is somebody who's had a barium enema. So they've had um, a barium solution put up their bottom <laughs> through their intestines so that radiologists can get a peek at what the intestines are looking at see if there's any little pinches or anything in there now you can also do a barium swallow where they're going to look at your esophagus and your stomach and maybe your upper in intestine as well so the barium being a heavy metal is going to show up quite white on an, an x-ray okay so with all this talk about um, illness it's kind of interesting to know why do why are chest x-ray is prescribed okay so a number of reasons why you might get a chest x-ray all right so if you have a persistent fever and cough all right so you are one sick little puppy if you have a fever that just does not go away and you've got a cough all right if you have suspected pneumonia so if your doctor is listening to your chest and here's what sounds like crackling paper they'll send you for chest x-rays all right, if you've had some type of a trauma, so if you've had chest trauma, if you've been in a, in a car accident or you've had um, a sports injury or you've had a fall down some stairs or some of that, if you've been near an explosion, right, if you've been shot at or hit with a, you know, and you've been in a riot or something like that, so they'll send you for chest x-rays. All right, if they suspect you have a pleural effusion, we're going to take a little peek at all these things. Um, sometimes if you if they're putting a pacemaker not sometimes but if they're putting a pacemaker or a central venous line in they'll use an x-ray so they can see where they're actually putting all the wires for that okay and then anything else they think that you might need a chest x-ray for Alrighty, so one of the first ones this was kind of interesting so we talked all right fever and cough you can't really see on an x-ray but you can see if you have pneumonia which I just showed you now one of the things they look for is trauma so if you've had a sports injury where you've just been pounded in the chest a lot of times you get up walk away and then you may not feel so well a couple days later or you know a couple hours later um, if you've been in a really bad or not if you've been in a car accident where you don't have an airbag or even if you do have an airbag where you've had a lot of pressure onto your chest okay again you get up you kind of leave and then you may not fe be feeling very well later or sometimes you just be in an, ex an, ex an accident and they're like okay let's take a peek here so this person here this was in Ireland him and his cousin were out at one of the big protests they had years ago his his cousin got hit with a rubber bullet and this guy got hit with a, um, a billy club from one of the um, 
policeman bashed him. So if you look at this from the outside, it doesn't really look like much. He's got a bit of a bruise down there. But when you take, oh, I'm hoping this is going to work. But when you take a pick, peek at, yeah, here we go. Okay. Underneath, what he ended up having was a whole pile of, what ends up happening here is you have a chest contusion or a, a lung contusion. And the pressure from outside, it doesn't break any actual bones. It just breaks a whole bunch of um, blood vessels. So the capillaries get broken. And then you get this bleeding into and leaking of fluid into the chest. All right, so this is why if you get a sports injury, you may get, you know, head somebody hits you head on, you're playing football with your friends outside on the weekend, and someone comes and, you know, bashes your head into your chest, and you're like, oh, what the hell? Nothing's broken, but, you know, you've it, that what they've done with all that pressure is broken blood vessels, and you've got some fluid that's building up in here, so they would call that a, a lung contusion or a lung bruise, all right? It's, it can be fairly serious as well okay so that's that young guy had got hit with a billy club thing and then had shortness of breath um, his blood pressure was changing he wasn't feeling very well went in they took a look at him did the chest x-ray and found that he had had um, an internal bleeding um, same thing if you get in a car accident right you, you may get in a car accident nothing's broken nothing really hurts too much but meanwhile you've broken those little blood vessels in there and you've got some fluid building up in your lungs so that's what a chest contusion looks like all right, so it's not broken and nothing's broken, all right, or ripped or torn or that you've just got some bleeding that's happening there. Now, a pleural effusion, what happens in a pleural effusion is you end up with a, um, if you remember the outside of the lungs, remember we were talking about the lungs, or you guys did the anatomy of the lungs, and you have the um, pleura, which is the um, lining on the outside of the lungs. So if you've got some conditions where you get a fluid that builds up in here in between the lining, the lung and the lining of the lung, that's called a pleural effusion. And there again, like look at the size of this lung because this is all fluid that's down there. So that's going to need some treatment. All right. If they're doing a central venous line placement, so something like chemotherapy or certain drugs, or sometimes they use a central venous line placement to um, look at blood, ven arterial blood pressure. Um, what they'll do is they you, you're kind of on a live x-ray and they will feed this um, line down in through your blood vessels right into your body so they want to make sure that they're doing it properly and then this next one's kind of cool too with the pacemaker so what they do is we'll talk about pacemakers I hope we get time in the um, uh, heart technologies unit so what they do is they do a little slice open in your chest they fit the pacemaker in and then they weave these two little wires down through the veins into your heart all right you, you can't really see this part here but into your heart and those little um, ends of those little lines there's like a little generator so it'll tell your heart hey buddy let's go and it'll give a little shock to get um, beating all right so this is what the pacemaker was kind of helps the heart keep on pace all right in this picture here you see a pneumothorax so a pneumothorax is um you'll hear it on those medicine shows all the time they're like it's a pneumothorax basically what it is is a collapsed lung collapsed lung is kind of funny you can have a collapsed lung lung because you're a smoker you can have a collapsed, collapsed lung because you've been in an accident or you've had a sports injury or you're tall right tall people tend to have a pneumothorax just for more reasons for then they don't even know why okay so on this slide here you'll see this person was taken in the upright position but this picture was taken in the ap direction all right because what we're looking for here is this collapsed lung so here you can see the lung all right that is like shriveled inside the lung cavity here okay <coughs> sorry about that <clears throat> Okay, we talked about this yesterday, <clears throat> that we usually like to take a chest x-ray in the PA position, so from the posterior to the anterior, and this will bring the heart, the ribs, the sternum, the lungs closer to the detector, so you're going to get them sharper, um, and you're going to get them closer to the actual real size. Now, this guy's wearing one of these little apron things over to protect his um, reproductive air area and this technician here the fake picture again she would be out of the room back in the protected area before um, they would have that x-ray go all right now again remember with these chest x-rays we're only seeing the uh, width and the height so we need to also get an idea of depth so with a chest x-ray what you're going to do is do a lateral one with your left side at the film if you remember your heart 
tilts towards the left. So what we want to do again is have the heart as close to poss as possible to the detector so that it's as sharp and as true to size as possible. All right, so we'll do the left side. Now, the next slide here is normally the slide where it's crickets in the classroom. So we have two pictures here. We've got a lung X chest x-ray that's done in the PA position and one that's done in a laying down position. So the, the laying down the supine position, the patient couldn't stand up. So they brought the portable machine into the room and shot, um, shot and took an x-ray from um, anterior to posterior while the person was laying on the bed. So I would just say, okay, guys, what's the difference between the two? And everyone would be really, really shy. So we'll just do it together. Now you can notice here, all right, this really fuzzy, all right, looks like this person's got a gigantic heart, okay? Um, here we've got, still fuzzy, but it's a lot sharper, all right? A lot clearer all through here, all right? We've got a nice clear x-ray. So this is the person standing and this is the person laying down. So you can just see the difference in the image, how much better it is if you can get the person to be standing, all right? Now, if you become a radiologist, you're gonna be such a whiz kid, you'll be able to figure out anything on the x-ray no matter what, but it's best to have it nice and clear in the first place. All right, now the last slide I have here for you, I hope this works. Okay, so this is just a nice, normal, clear chest x-ray. All right, we got our left side here. You can see the trachea coming down here, dividing into the two bronchi. So if you look really careful, you can see a branch here and you can see a branch of the bronchi here. You can see the vertebrae in through here, all righty. You can see a nice clavicle here. This one's not broken, right? You can see the ribs come across here, all right? These are gonna be the posterior ribs and these are the anterior ribs here. You can see part of the liver here and this top, on the top of this is gonna be the diaphragm lung here. Now this kind of looks a little bit odd, but we'll talk about this later. This is actually a part of the bowels and these little big, these dark spots here are just air bubbles in the, or gas bubbles, I guess, in the bowels, okay? So this is a nice clear chest x-ray. So I'll just show you, this was um, an x-ray that was taken over, I think I, I think I only did the first five, the five days, all right? So this is day one to day five. So this was somebody who came into the clinic, not this clinic in North Bay, but into a clinic with um, symptoms of COVID. And then they did the chest x-ray the first day. So here you see starts to get kind of fuzzy all in here, right? They, they talk about it having a ground glass appearance. So basically what a ground glass appearance looks like is, um, or ground glass opacity or opacity, however you say that word, um, it basically means that it looks like frosted glass. So you can still see behind, you can still see all the, you know, ribs and all that kind of stuff behind, um, but it looks like you've got, something that's frosted behind there all right so this was day one and then this was day five so this person is in acute respiratory distress now all right so this lungs are completely filled so that's how quickly um, the ARDS or the really severe lung issues happen for COVID which is why it's really a problem because this person cannot do gas exchange if there's big layers of water, mucus, whatever it is, laying on top of the alveoli. All right. So that's everything I believe for today's note. Um, of course, you're going to have a little quiz on this one. Um, just make sure that again, with that handout, just do as much as you can on it because we're going to take it up. I just want you to kind of force you to look at stuff and just see how it looks. Okay. So, wow, this was less than half an hour today. That's pretty darn good. See you later.